folks, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the 2022 Portland Open. And after two days at Blue Lake, we now pivot over to moving day out at the brand new layout at Glendevere. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in and give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters who help make that all possible. Again, I am Dustin Murray, bringing you the commentary and really looking forward to this one. As again, we have a brand new redesign from Dustin Keegan out at Glendevere, 18 brand new holes. And I can't wait to see this card attack it. We have James Proctor and Paul McBeth rejoining us for the chase card from day two. Then we got Cole Radolin and Max Rigitnig coming in to finish things off. So a couple of new faces. As you can see, Simon Lazat leading the field right now with Joel Freeman and Garrett Gerthy not too far behind. And then we start getting some of the players you see here on our chase card. Of course, James Proctor playing for Innova, putting and throwing a lot of the AVRs and the Toro. Also, of course, known for several of the Destroyers, which I'm sure we'll see a lot of. Also, worth noting, James Proctor, a full-time teacher, is actually playing this course blind for this tournament. He had known Blue Lake from previous events, but yeah, just wanted to put that one out there. And of course, we got Paul McBeth, certainly known for his Luna, putting it with a little bit of a new style here lately, though. And of course, going to be throwing some Zeus's Forces, Captain's Raptor, and several other famous Discraft molds. Then we got Cole Redolin, now putting the Lunas once more after leaving EV7, after not really jiving with the Fies and uh, kind of moving on. And then, other than that, plays for Infinite Disc, so has an open bag. You see a lot of Discraft in there, but certainly has a few other companies that uh, come in. Then we have Max Forgetnik from Sweet. This is his first year playing any Disc Golf Pro Tour events. As you can see, he's sponsored by Dismadia, so throwing and putting the P2s. A lot of PDs and PD2s in the bag, as well as some DD3s, and can't wait to see him play. As we get over to hole one, a 670 foot par four is going to require a big hand hyzer or forehand off the tee. You have to make sure you clear the OB golf green as well as a hazard to set yourself up for approach with an elevated pin. We're here for round three action of the MPO division. We've got the chase card here, ready to throw some discs. Who's ready? I'm ready. This guy is awesome. Representing the United Flyers of Sonoma. Let's hear it for James Proctor. And James Proctor coming in here. Again, playing the course blind. Had a fantastic round on moving day. Going seven through nine on the front nine to get here. 37 career MPO wins. Top 30 at LVC this year and had several big finishes in 2021, including a ninth at this very event, the Portland Open. He chooses to go the big Anheuser backhand route. Clears the green and the hazard, no problem. Next up on the box, you don't have to ask. He's repping the whole Huntington Beach community. <laughs> Let's get him on the team with a warm round of applause. Paul McBeth! I honestly don't know if this guy's announcing or his suit is more amazing, but we get to Paul McBeth, top five now in the UDIS World Rankings. Of course, five world championships to his name. Won the Memorial in Waco to kick off this year. Second at Jonesboro in the Open at Belton. Also top ten at Texas State in our first major of the year at Champions Cup after a fantastic final round where he broke the record at WR Jackson. He too will play the big Anheuser here. And again clears the green and the hazard, which is your main goal. old, placing the top 30 at LBC in Waco this year. In 2021, we saw him play seventh at Ledgestone, which really put him on the map and had some top 30 finishes here at this very event at Portland and at Las Vegas Challenge. Also near top 30 at D-Glow in Idlewild, excuse me. And just getting his career started. C2 will play the big Anheuser backhand. And that will do just fine. coming all the way over from Sweden. Don't know too much about him. He's been playing MPO since about 2016, has 18 career wins over in Sweden. This year is his first year playing on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. He's had a few near top 30 finishes at Texas State's No TV Open. 
And he's off to a great start here in Portland. This could be his biggest career finish yet if he can keep it up. And he will play the forehand, which is a fine option for placement on this. As that will very much clear the golf green and the OB hazard. It's really about getting about 350 feet off the tee and just making sure you stay in play and away from that hazard and OB. And it sets up another big left to right moving shot to approach a green that has a bit of a slope on the backside. Actually decides to play the backhand over near the tree line and slope in, which is also a fine option for this hole. You kind of have dealer's choice on how you want to approach the pin. The big shot there from Proctor. Eka's going to go deep OB. So we're going to have a long putt to try to save bogey on this one. Here's that slight turnover from Macbeth. Can't quite tell where he landed, but we'll have to see once we get up there. As we now get to Cole, who will play that forehand, which you can often see if you are more to the right-hand side of the fairway off the tee. And that will sit down nicely. It's always a little bit scary to catch edge and roll down that slope I was referring to, but it does stay just fine. Yeah, Macbeth not really able to attack this one for Birdie. For Birdie has to just kind of lay up. Oh. Tough one there for Proctor to kick this one off. Mm, a little high there from Max. Here's Cole. This should be for Birdie, and indeed that will be the three to kick things off with the score. As this was the most difficult hole on the course. Played point three strokes over par with only 21% of the field finding the birdie. Macbeth will settle for par. Max likely the same, and James will be unfortunately a little bit bigger than that, I believe. So he will indeed take the bogey. We head to hole two, a 425 foot par three, as you can see slightly downhill, or it's gonna be 390 feet, excuse me. Slightly downhill, requires a bit of a left to right moving shot. Kind of tight gap off the tee. Requires a pretty big forehand to get down there, but with it being slightly downhill, it is certainly possible. Cole will punch it down there indeed. Really well done. As again, if you were not aware, looking at some of these holes, you wouldn't really know you were on a golf course. I feel like Dustin Keegan did a very good job kind of designing this course. And we're actually seeing Macbeth play this wide right hyzer shot. We saw Simon Lazat do the same thing. Definitely a much more uncommon route, but... Ball sends it down there. There is no Mando on this hole, so that is an option. But again, if you've got the right around 400 foot forehand with this downhill slope, you can certainly reach it with this route you see Max take. Certainly saw a pretty big forehand out of him on the first hole, so not surprised to see it come out once more, but that would be just outside the circle, a little bit deep. Proctor 2 eyeing that wide right route that Macbeth took. And that will also fall deep over there on the side. <laughs> so here's Proctor just outside circle 2. Steps one up there. We'll have to settle for par, just out of range. That really is the risk of taking that big wide right shot is if you just don't 
get the angle just right. You either wind up carrying too far forward or not hyzering over enough, and it leaves you with a very lengthy putt. But Paul Macbeth is up to the task. What a score from Macbeth. Definitely going to have to rewind that one back and take another look. That was incredible. A 70-footer to put that one in for the score. Looking to try to make some moves here on moving day right off the bat. So again, Max just outside the circle for his birdie attempt here. Ah, just a little wide. We'll have to settle for a par on this one as we get up to Cole, who had the big forehand reach. And he will knock down two in a row to get his third round started here at Glendevere. As you'll notice, it's also definitely got some rain going on. It's a very wet day out at Glendevere. We had some on and off rain at Blue Lake on day two, but from what I understand, this day was pretty consistent rain so we will see Max tap in the par Proctor doing the same so we head over to hole three 370 foot par three again kind of a wooded tunnel shot Amando takes away the big hyzer out wide right there is a flex line backhand that you'll likely see that was Dustin Keegan said was the ideal route and he designed the course so I'll take his word for it that the backhand flex line up the right hand side is probably the best way for the right handed player to attack this but there are a couple options out there this Cole will take the box again just a beautiful tunnel shot and that is that flex backhand I was referring to that Keegan mentioned was the way to go, but unfortunately that one gets hung up. If that can fade out at the end, that's going to be money. Oh, yes. Slides right inside the circle at the end of its flight. A beautiful shot from Macbeth. You can see it's a little bit uphill as well as you make your way up the fairway. Only OB you have to worry about is out to the left. That looks a little overturned there for Max. Skates up there, though. What? And actually gets some great ground action. Wow, okay then. Does still have a putt at it. I thought that might kind of fizzle out, but he makes his way up there as we get to Proctor. Kind of playing more up the gut with a slight turnover, but we'll get hung up. And again, you have to wonder if some of that comes down to just not being familiar with the course. Again, playing this course for the first time this round. Did not get a chance to practice it before the tournament. As he will throw a nice little upshot there to at least recover a par out of this. Oh, laying out, committed to that one. I will give it a chance, but at least skates it up there for the par. And here's Max. A lengthy bid, but a chance. Uh, just a little wide. Certainly no easy task, but we get up to Macbeth, who... And a beautiful shot off the tee. He will be rewarded with the circle one putt. Again, a little bit of different putting form that I'm used to seeing from him at this event. But hey, it works. Back-to-back -back birdies here on holes two and three from Macbeth. The rest of the car looking to clean up their pars. This did play a little bit easier than the previous two holes. Hole one being the most difficult on the day and hole two being fifth in difficulty. Just played at tenth, just slightly under par. 15% of the field find the birdie. Hole. 
back after a short break. Now we get to hole four, a 450 foot par three. You can attack this thing straight up the gap or a big left to right moving shot wide left side of the fairway though that does bring the OB into play. There's also an OB golf green and a couple of hazards on the right hand side of the fairway. We do see Macbeth is lining up that wide left shot I was referring to. Actually turns it into a little bit of a sky roller. This is pretty lengthy at 450 feet, especially with the angle you have to take to attack the pin. So now we get up to Cole. Looking to take his tee shot. Looking to take that similar sky roller to Macbeth. See what kind of move he can get on this. That looks like it's getting up there nicely. Actually rolls deep. There is no OB deep in the pen, but obviously a much lengthier putt ahead of him, but still a great shot there. Make the progress he did. So now get up to Max. See what he can do here. Actually decides to attack that center gap. And that is a beautiful looking shot, as long as it can get out in time. And yeah, it will. This is the back side of circle one. We'll have a look at it there. What a move. Is Proctor going for that roller out wide left? That is rolling out of bounds though, and that has no chance at coming back. Just not the right angle. So he's going to have to take that pretty far back to try to approach the green. Go in. Go in. And Proctor known for his throw-ins after what we saw on hole one in round two. And that one... Was well, tracking there for a bit. We'll get it up there right towards the edge of circle one as we get up to Macbeth. Looks like he's maybe just outside circle two or just on the edge of it. Yeah. And after a 70 footer, not too long ago for Birdie, Paul Macbeth steps up here and delivers yet another lengthy bid for the score, this time 60 feet. So not quite as impressive as a 70-footer there, Macbeth, but <laughs> still a fantastic putt from inside circle two. Getting hot early on the putting green. So we get up to Cole, who was a little deep off the tee. Just wide there. So we get up to Proctor, who's just near the circle's edge after going OB, looking to try to at least get bogey here. And he'll do it, catching the right side chain. So limiting the damage after going awry off the tee box. Now get up to Max here. That's such a pretty shot off the tee, and he has a circle one putt opportunity here to score. There you go. That'll put him on the board. His first birdie of the round going one under so far here. Keeping himself in the mix as Cole will come in to tap up a par. And now we get to hole five, a 910-foot par four, very downhill Got some OB bunkers and golf greens to worry about as you approach the green, and that's really what makes this hole tricky. 
Also, a special shout out to Big Germ, who managed to throw a 410 foot shot with his cart. If you saw that practice route. <laughs> that certainly helped me out a lot, kind of learning this course. This is a brand new layout. As uh, Macbeth puts a solid tee shot down there. Again, as long as you can avoid the OB green and some of these hazard bunkers down there, you're pretty good to go to set up for your approach. It's like one of the few holes on the course that, you know, kind of reminds you that you're on a golf course. Just such a pretty shot. Glad it's featured here. And again, still poses a lot of danger down there. That has a move put on it. Drifting well left here. Because the only real OB besides the bunkers and golf greens is OB on the right-hand side of the fairway. So playing out left is certainly not a bad call. As everyone off the tee boxes kept themselves in play. And made some good progress down the fairway. Now it's just all about approaching this very tricky green. A couple little hills where the basket sits. An OB pond type situation guards the front side of the green. There is OB deep of the pin. And well, Cole has found some form of OB there short of the pin. A couple different OB spots you can catch here on the front side as you approach the green, as well as the OB deep of the basket, which I think is inside circle one. So again, very tricky approach shot. Proctor may have just nailed it though. Yeah, landing up on those slopes is really the best way to stay safe. Now get over to Max, who learning he's definitely got a forehand on him so far this round, but that one's drifting a little bit too much on him, it looks like. Does make it over the OB pond and stays in bounds, but a very lengthy putt ahead. Now get up to Macbeth. Also choosing to go forehand here. Just trying to crash it into the hill. Looks to be solid. Yep, clears the pond and makes its way near the green. And I guess it was the pond that Cole found. We'll take it back from there. Just kind of pitching up, trying to minimize the damage. Lengthy situation here for Max outside circle two. Just kind of laying it up there. Not wanting to mess with this one. Here's Macbeth, though, for birdie. This could be four in a row. A great start to moving day for Paul, and that'll do. Looking to make a big push here on our first day, Glenn Devere. And now get over to Proctor. Nicely played hole from James as well, who'll also card the birdie. Cole collecting the bogey after the OB, and Max will take the par. Now we get to hole six, a 430 foot par three with a double mando off the tee that you need to stay in between so it requires you to kind of stay centered it's also a slightly downhill and also a low ceiling that you're going to have to challenge pretty wide gap though as you can see and paul hits the gap perfectly and that's about exactly how you draw it up the ideal play there from Paul puts him right there in putting territory. So everyone will be looking to kind of just follow that vapor trail, honestly. 
We'll shot the Philo on that turn. And oh, that one does not get over enough. Two straight gets caught up there. As long as you make the Mando, there's really no trouble to get into as far as OB or anything like that. It's just trying to navigate through these trees and get up to the putting green. We're seeing a big roller here from Max up the left-hand side, it looks like. But that, too, will find the tree barricade. Well outside circle, too. They're just pitching up for par at that point. Hole hits the gap nicely as well. That is looking pristine as long as it gets the right ground action. And yeah, that'll skate up there right near the circle's edge. So we will have a look at Birdie. Just outside 30 feet. Proctor just looking to get up and down for par. And that will do. No fault in that. Up there from Max will get him inside the circle as well for his par save. Here's Macbeth. Looking for another birdie. This will be five in a row. And just a little short on that one. Knew it as soon as he let go. So we'll snap the streak, but still no blemishes on the scorecard. So we'll be able to tap in that par. Here's Cole for birdie. And wide right again. That's been his miss so far on the putting green. Just a little wide right. Okay, maybe taking some time kind of getting used to putting with the Luna again after putting the five for a bit. Wasn't really jiving with the deeper putter. Decided to move back to the Luna. Max having no problem knocking in the par. It's been fun to watch him play so far. It's kind of come from obscurity as far as the Disc Golf Pro Tour is concerned, but obviously plays a lot out in Sweden, so cool to see him here stateside now. It's now Cole missing a low. And that's a tough one. Proctor a little high. So a couple of jitters here on the putting green from some of the card. No one quite able to connect. Everyone just having to settle for these tap-ins outside of Max, who had a good par putt. Cole taking the bogey there, and Macbeth and Proctor taking some, and we'll now move on after a short break. <laughs> Now we get to hole seven, a 680 foot par four, and it's just very uphill. You need a big try to try to get to the top of this hill. And then once you make your way up there, it's a very guarded green, as you can see. Really requires a dead center approach shot to avoid the trees guarding the far left and right. But really the main obstacle is just trying to get up this hill off the tee through a fairly tight gap. But Macbeth will skip it on up there just fine. Also worth knowing there is a double Mando that you have to make to keep yourself centered on this fairway. Can't go for anything crazy wide right. Or wide left, for that matter. Just forces you up this lane, and well, Max executed that very well. Ideal position. So we now get to Proctor. Looking to just kind of follow that same line. And that looks money. 
Yeah, getting right on up there with the rest of the group where you want to be. Try to walk away with the birdie on this one. That's swinging a little wider right than Cole would have wanted. That's going to hang him up and make the approach a lot more tricky. So he's still got to get up this hill, and he's essentially got a blind approach now to the pin with awkward footing coming up this hill. Just tries to rip one as best he can. And what a shot from Cole! Considering his footing and... The position he was in, that was excellent. And a fantastic shot here from Proctor. Right on up next to the pin. So, so far, our card handling this hole very well. Great shot as well from Macbeth. Almost lays right there on top of Cole's lie. Max, the best lie of all, also playing that wide route. Skips on up there. Not quite sure if he made it to the circle tree. Kind of blocked my view on that one, but we'll see. We'll be first to putt, that's for sure. And yeah, has an open look at it. And he looks like he's right on the edge of the circle, just outside of it. Ah, oh, just a little high. Dead center, though. Unfortunate. So now get over to Paul, right next to Cole. We'll act first. And just hops that one in. So back to scoring after a break on hole six, I guess you could say. Really trying to contend for a lead card spot right now, the way he's playing. Trying to make a move up that leaderboard. Get over to Cole. And wide right yet again. This was a little closer to target, hitting the chains. But yeah, it's just he's just kind of pulling him off to the right a little bit. Hopefully he can adjust. Proctor will lay in his birdie. Max and Cole now just look to clean up the pars here. Before we move on to hole eight, starting to approach the end of our front nine. This hole eight is a 615 foot par four that Mando makes you kind of play to the left hand side of the fairway. Plays a little bit downhill. There are gaps for both the forehand and the backhand, so it's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure. And Dustin Keegan says it's reachable off the tee for Eagle due to the downhill nature. There is some OB right you also have to contend with on this hole. Macbeth looking for the big roller. Oh yeah. Again, this hole yeah, yeah. really oh. kind of gives you your options, and the roller is really kind of the way to get up there to try to have a chance at Eagle. And, well, Paul Macbeth, he's, he's done just that. So you kind of take a look at how he made it happen. Getting the nice slow-mo of the roller, really just committing to that, coming back over. Of course, you know you're always going to see some fine form when you see Paul throw. It's Proctor choosing the forehand gap. Proctor is lining up the left lane for him. He's going to be looking just to... Play for the birdie with a play like this. That's a great looking shot. Again, no OB over there to worry about. Out in the open as well. That's what kind of makes the forehand a pretty attractive option off the tee. Staying away from all that OB and giving yourself a open space to work with. Oh, and Max getting caught up there. 
luckily not oh he did kick into the right hand ob it wasn't quite sure just got the notification there so that's a tough break it looks like cole looking to play that same option as proctor the forehand out left and that will play it's right on up there right next to proctor so we get to see a couple of different lies, a couple of different looks on how to play this, but unfortunately Max still has a ton of ground to cover. So he has to take that from way back. Trying to play the big hyzer in. And that is a beautiful shot to save par. Nicely done there for Max to at least not take any damage on this one. You can see some very open routes from that left-hand side of the fairway to attack this thing for birdie. That really is the play for the guaranteed birdie, it feels like. Just getting yourself out in the open, giving yourself some clean approaches. Proctor going to skate on up there right inside the circle as well. And with the roller, Macbeth has a legitimate chance at eagle here. It's a lengthy putt just inside circle two. Oh, a nice try. Still will be able to get the birdie out of that, but misses the chance at eagle. It's got to give a shot to Kevin Jones, who did manage to get the eagle. It was pretty much parked off the tee from what I could tell. It was the only one to find it on the day as we are going to see Cole be able to get the birdie there so we should be seeing plenty of birdies here on hole eight outside of max but great play for him to get the par save at least so proctor will connect there macbeth now Pretty short putt for birdie. That's, that is tough. It's one that he's going to be kicking himself for. Had a chance at eagle and winds up walking away with par. Certainly see a little bit of frustration there as we get to the end of our front nine. It's a 645-foot par four for MPO. A double Mando forces you to play the route that the drone's taken, forces you to play this dead straight shot. There's a couple of OB bunkers and hazards to worry about kind of near the front side of the green. Outside of that, no real other OB you have to worry about. But again, just kind of a tricky hole due to the double Mando taking out any type of big hyzer outright or... And he play out wide left as well. Just fortunate to play this low ceiling downhill tunnel shot. Proctor will make his way down there. Cole drifting a bit more to the left and getting a bit of a tree kick, but no worries. Still make some good progress. That one's going to be a little too high. Hits that low ceiling, gets knocked down. Not making as much progress as he probably wanted. Sick. Max, though, getting a good shot there. Gets the full flight out to the left hand side of the fairway. Paul Beth first to act here, try to approach this green. Again, a very guarded green, kind of in a grove of trees down the fairway straight ahead. Play the big Annie in, forcing it over, now fighting out, but certainly coming up short of the putting green as far out as he was. Just 
kind of have to pick your path of choice to get up there. A couple of different gaps available. Proctor playing out to the right. That will get hung up. It's a little too high out the hands. Cole trying to Heiser one in. Looks like he's found the gap he's looking for, and yes. A fantastic approach from Cole. Gets him out there for a pretty easy look at Birdie to end off his front nine. And Max, who got furthest of all, trying to force one in there, comes up a bit short. So Proctor here is trying to get up and down for the par at this point. And that is well executed. Here's Macbeth. Maybe trying to give this a little bit of a go. Jumper, wide right. Oh my goodness, that was so close. Hits the basket, lays on down. We'll be able to get par, but almost had a chance at something special. As that toss up is going to go astray and rolls right back towards Max. That's a, a rough one there for him. See if he can still make something happen here. Be able to connect onto that one, unfortunately. Cole finding the center there. A couple of birdies in a row now for him. Starting to get his round going in the right direction. Best settles for par, but still five under on the front nine. Not a bad score by any means. Kept this car clean and scored well enough to keep him in the top five here on the front nine. Proctor will connect with a par, hovering right near the top five himself. And Max still very much keeping himself in the mix here on this front nine, despite the bogey to end things here on hole number nine. And that's going to wrap things up here for our first half of moving day out at the new Glendevere. Take a look at the front nine results. You can see Paul having a pretty solid start. The rest of the card still very much in the hunt here as Paul finding himself in fifth right now. Simon starting to create a little bit of separation up towards the top of the leaderboard with Garrett Griffey, Joel Freeman, and Isaac Robinson just behind. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning into this coverage. Definitely be sure to follow subscribe so you can catch the rest of our Portland Open coverage as well as our future events throughout the rest of this year. And I'm sure going forward, Again, so shout out to our Patreon supporters who help make this all possible. And again, if you'd like to give me a follow, I'm Dustin Murray. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at follow Dust and Dustin Disc on YouTube. And so I'll catch you on the back nine here shortly. So be sure to tune in. See you then.